My next guest, I said this last time, I'll say it again, has the best name in MMA, and he's coming off his first UFC victory, getting that uh, decision uh, over Josh Parisian at UFC Vegas 15 on November 28th. Of course, I'm talking about Parker Porter back here on the program. Parker, how's it going, man? It's going great, man. Couldn't be happier. I bet. Uh, congratulations. First UFC victory. I know it's been a long road for you getting here. Have you been able to you know, digest all this and just take it in that you've got a win in the UFC now? Yeah, yeah, it's still kind of settling in there, but uh, but absolutely, yeah, it's it's been uh, it's been kind of overwhelming at first, you know, and and just processing everything is really it still hasn't fully hit me yet. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's very cool to see, and I always love stories like this. Someone like yourself who's worked really hard. I mean, we talked about this in the last interview where you know you didn't know if this was gonna you know your your career is gonna continue, and here you are getting a UFC opportunity, and now getting the second fight, you capitalize on it. Uh, what was the game plan heading in? Because uh, you really looked in control of the whole fight. Yeah, uh, the original plan was to, um, you know, try to close distance and really just kind of smother him when he comes forward. A lot of his fights uh, that we've seen, he he's usually the aggressor, kind of backing people up, and that's when he tends to catch them with the the flashy or spinning stuff. So our our whole game plan was to just not give any ground and try to close distance and clinch and take it to the ground. Um, but in in doing so. Uh, we ended up turning it into more of a striking match than than an actual uh, uh, wrestling match. Anything surprise you at all about him as an opponent? Um, no, I mean, like he he came in just about exactly what we expected to do. Um, I was actually expecting a little bit more of the flashy stuff that he's pretty well known for. Um, you know, he caught me early on in that first round with one of them. Uh, and, uh, and thankfully it didn't have enough juice on it to put me down to the ground, but um after that i was able to shut down any and like he think he did it like one or two more times throughout the the next two rounds um but uh, i was able to shut that down as well and, and really just close distance and keep doing my game plan so it goes to the judges scorecards i think everyone watching at home felt like you won but you never know what the judges so what's going through your head as bruce buffer's reading the scorecards are you pretty confident or are you like ah like we'll, we'll see what happens super super confident i yeah. um i felt like that first round because of yeah, you know, he 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 had me a little bit stunned and wobbled, and uh, I uh, I ended the first round of getting back to my feet. I, I went for a takedown that didn't go my way, and he he was able to kind of stuff me down and, and get me down to the ground and, and keep me there while I was fighting to get back to my feet at the bell. Um, so I felt like that that round could have gone either way, um, but then after the second and third round, I was so confident that I I was winning both of those rounds, you know, uh, controlling the fight dominating with the you know more strikes and just just overall knew, I knew I had it I knew I had it and if I didn't have it I was I would have been absolutely shocked <laughs> what was the feedback like I don't know if your management has talked to the UFC or you spoke to the UFC like any feedback from them because they must have been happy to see you get the win especially as an underdog no feedback yet um as far as I know they're they're happy with it and you know it was uh, it was a great performance we both uh you know, Josh and I are, are a piece of history now in the sense that we we broke a record for most significant strikes landed. That's in the right. I was going to ask you about that. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, so that that was obviously really cool to uh, to get my redemption from my my debut loss to you know and come back and set a record like that. Um, but no, we haven't we haven't really heard anything yet. We don't have anybody uh, in the, in our sites. We haven't made any requests or anything like that. We're just back in the uh, back in the gym back on the grind and getting ready for whenever that call comes and uh when ideally would you like to get back in there i'm sure you've thought of that now the, the sooner the better you know i'm thinking uh you know they've they've got the cards coming up in january and they're back in vegas again in february i think so uh you know i could be ready for february march that'd be perfect any opponents in mind or you just leave that up to your management no, I leave that up to the manager. They just point me in the direction and say go, and I go. Yeah, not not. Uh, you don't strike me as the type of guy to cut like a pro wrestling promo and be like, I want you next, you know, anything like that. But no, uh, no, yeah. I've never, I've never been one to like call people out or <laughs> no. talk trash. It's just not my style. No, it's good. You do your talking in the cage, right? As they say. So there you go. Exactly. That makes a lot of sense. Exactly. What a, speak louder than words. What about the fans? Like, I know you've had a lot of support for a while, like just from your community and and everyone at the gym and all that. Like, what was that like getting to see all the messages the next day and you know people yeah, congratulating amazing. you on the victory. Yeah. Amazing. So many people are, are just coming like people, not that they're coming out of the woodwork, but people I haven't talked to in a while. They're like, Hey man, you know, like I saw that you won. We're so proud of you. We've been like people I had no idea were even following my career. Um, and then uh, on top of it, new, new people that I, you know, I've never met in a day in my life. I get messages on social media from, 
you know, uh, from the UK, from Austria, from Australia, from Thailand, you know, like, oh, you just gained a fan for life. We're so, so happy with that, that performance. It was incredible. We had so much fun watching. Great job. You know, it's just the, uh, the outpour of support has been, uh, you know, tremendous. Did you have a lot of people reaching out saying, saying they won money on the fight? I did. I did. I had a whole bunch of people um, reach out and, you know, just like I said, just, hey, thanks, man. We, we bet on you and it didn't disappoint. And, you know, I'm a richer man because of it. Anyone offer to buy you dinner? Because that's the rule. You did your part. They got to do something for you now. Especially no, nobody the- offered to buy me dinner yet. But uh, I, I did have a friend who we didn't even make a bet or anything, but he just randomly sent me a message, uh, you know, a, a picture of a, a tomahawk steak. He said, I got one of these for you after you get home. There you go. So, that's a good friend right there. That's Because that's my me. rule. I tell all the fighters this. If anyone bets on you and they, they want to tell you about it, they should buy you a steak dinner because that's a nice gesture. You know, you're probably spending under 100 bucks depending on how much they spent. But I think that should be right. the rule. What do you think right. of that? I think that's a solid rule. I can get behind that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, have we talked since they unveiled the retro jerseys in the NHL? Did I? T- did we talk? I know we talked about the Hartford Whalers last time, but um, did no? Did, they didn't. No. So, have you seen the jerseys? Because some fans are upset because you know, obviously the the teams in uh, Carolina now, but their throwback is Hartford. But they're almost like Hartford should be separate from that. What? Where do you stand on that? Are you are you cool to see? Have you seen the jerseys? By the way. No, I haven't seen the jerseys yet, so I don't know. Like, I can't really stand by it, but like, I, I give an opinion on it. But I mean, from the sounds of it, what do you mean? Like, they they look just like the old Hartford Whalers. Yeah, jerseys they they basically are Hawkers? the Hartford Whalers jerseys, but they've updated it a little bit. But uh, but I guess there's there's fans that are kind of like from Hartford that are like, well, they're not our team because they moved, so they're like, right. they, Hartford should just have its own jersey or something. I think is what the argument was. So yeah, we'll see. Yeah, but that I'm, is such a good. I'm, we talked about this last I'm, time. It's I'm such a good jersey. Because that's that's my home my home my home state you know like yeah. so i'm i'm probably i would probably agree with with some of these upset uh, and uh, angry fans that's why i wanted to that ask that's, exactly so that's I'm glad our we jersey that. yeah so yeah they're called retro rewind so they just came out with the jerseys uh like a couple weeks ago so that might be something you know maybe use some of that ufc okay. money get yourself a new whalers yeah, jersey that'd be kind of cool down. i want to look that up now there you go we'll uh, definitely do it after that and kind of on that note what are the plans for the holidays uh as of right now just uh Christmas as usual. We're going to go get a tree on uh, Monday with the kids after they get out of school and uh, uh, just start decorating. And, and hopefully if uh, you know COVID's not too out of control, we can have plenty of people over to celebrate. Excellent. What's your favorite Christmas movie before we get out of here? Uh, Elf. Awesome choice. Awesome choice. Would have also accepted <laughs> Die Hard as well because that is a Christmas movie as far as I'm also, concerned. Yes, Parker, 100%. this is a lot of fun, man. Again, congratulations on getting the victory. Uh, anyone you want to thank, any sponsors, any social media, I'll give you the last word. Uh, just my team right now. I mean, you follow me on uh, Instagram at Parker Porter MMA. Uh, same thing on Facebook and on Twitter at Parker uh, underscore Porter. Um, I got to thank my, my coach, uh, uh, my striking coach, Ed Thornton, over at Thornton's Martial Arts. My wrestling coach, Kia Galampour, my longtime training partner, Dan Frechek, and my uh, my strength and conditioning coach, Dan Esposito. Uh, and, of course, without uh, without top game management, especially Tyson Chartier, uh, it would have been a, a long, an even longer road, and I might not even be where I am right now without that help. So all those guys, I, I'm here right now doing what I'm doing because they're, they've been behind me and helping me. 